Welcome in 11 episode. Today we will finish implementing the placing shape logic. If you want to help support this channel, hit the subscribe button below this video, turn on notification so you will not miss any future episode I release. Ok, so let's get started. So as you remember in our previous episode, we have implemented the shape placing logic. So if for any reason you cannot place shape on your grid, because you try to place it outside of the grid, the shape is going to go to the start position. But there is actually last thing which we need to do. So let's say the shape is placed already on the grid and you try to place this, this line. So if you go over the shape which is already on the grid, it's nothing happened. So player cannot really see that why you cannot place this shape here. Because if you put the shape exactly over the other one, you can't see the, the, the grid below. So what we're going to do, we're going to change the color of the overlapping square. So in this situation, the bottom square will change its color to red. And, that, and in this way, we're going to indicate to the player that there is something wrong and the shape cannot be placed. OK, so let's first of all actually change this color of this normal textures. So let's stop the project. And now let's go to the prefabs folder. Let's open the square image. Let's double click on it, switch to the scene view, and then select the square image. And we want to change this red texture inside the source image for our square image to, let's say, green. So let's go to the graphics, then squares, and then grab the green image, and then drop it into the source image. And then let's press this small arrow, save. And now let's start the game. As you see, all of the shapes are green now. OK, so we're going to use the red color to indicate the error in the game. OK, so we can stop it now. Let's actually save everything. Save and then save project. And now let's go to our scripts, then shape, and then let's open the shape square. OK, so inside this class, inside the shape square script, we're going to put two public functions. So right below the active activate shape, we're going to put another public function. So public void. And I'm going to I'm going to call it set occupied. OK, and inside this function, as you see, we already have the reference for our occupied image and we set it to false right at the start. So we're going to call occupied occupied image dot game object dot set active and we're gonna set it to true so we're just gonna activate the set the occupied image which is gonna be our red image and then right below we're gonna put another function public void and I will call it unset occupied okay let's put the braces and this function, we're going to do the same, but we're going to just deactivate our occupied image. So occupied image dot game object dot set active. And we're going to call we're going to set it to false. OK, so make sure you save everything now. And now let's go to our grid square class. So inside the grid square, when we actually checking for the collision. So as you see, we have three functions here on collision on trigger enter to D on trigger stay to D and on trigger exit to D. So inside those two functions, when we're actually detecting there is a collision, we're going to activate the occupied square and then over here we're going to deactivate it. OK, so inside on trigger enter to D, we have already the F statement to check if the square is already occupied or not. So let's put the else and we need to put else if collision dot get component and we're going to get component for the shape square is not equal null so that means this object has a component of the shape square we will call collision dot get component shape square 
dot set occupied. Okay, let's go. Let's copy this else statement. So I just copy it. We will put exactly the same in our on trigger state to D. So I will just paste the same function here and inside our on trigger exit to D. I will put else if collision dot get component shape square is not equal null. We're gonna call the collision dot get component shape square dot unset occupied okay so that's pretty much it let's save everything now let's go back to unity okay let's go to our prefabs folder open the square image just double click on it click on our occupied image and make sure you have inside the source image there is a red texture so we want to set our square to be red if is going to overlap another geometry on the grid. So this is fine. Let's click the small arrow, go back. Now when we press play, let's place some shape on the grid. Let's try to grab this shape and then try to place. So as you see, the, the first square is overlapping the geometry, so we cannot be placed. So the player can straight away see that there is something wrong with specific square, okay? So we cannot place it now. So the square gonna go back to the start position. The same happened with this square. But if there is no if there is no collision detected, the, the, the square is fine. So we can place it. Okay, so we cannot place it here. We can place it there. And of course we don't have any more shapes. Okay, so we have this problem sorted. So I think our shape placing logic is already is already done. So there is one more thing which I want to do in this episode. I want to add the back button here and let's add some other UI which we're missing. Let's go to let's stop our project, go to the canvas and then let's right click on the stop background panel UI button. And uh, let's call this button back button. Back. Let's go here and then delete the text component. Select this back button. And then let's go to our graphics, then main menu. And we have the back texture. So I will just select this back button, grab our back texture and drop it into the source image. And then press the set native size. And let's actually move this back button. Let's actually switch to the game view to be on the side over here and maybe a bit down let's change this anchoring point to be on the side okay and then let's add some behavior for this button but before we do that we need to actually create one more script so let's first of all save everything and then go to our scripts folder right click create c -sharp script I will call the script many buttons. Okay, let's now select our main camera inside our game scene and then grab our many buttons, drop it here. So make sure the main camera have this script assigned. Now we can open this many button script. So double click on it. Okay, and there are two functions which I want to add. So the first function will be awake. So let's remove everything, all of these functions. So the first function will be private, void awake. And then what I tend to do is to disable login for the build. So when we're going to build our game for the Android or any other platform, I used to do like if the uh, application dot is editor will be equal to false so if we are not running this game in the editor mode we're gonna call dbook 
dot unity logger dot log enabled will be equal to false. So we just simply gonna disable the logging all of the debug log messages on the Android. So this is gonna really help your game. If you do a lot of logging in your game, this is the easiest way to actually disable the standard logging and your game will perform much better. Okay, so this is just for the for the performance. So the next thing I wanna add is public void and then load scene. Let's put the string name and this is gonna be scene management, but in order to do the scene management we need to go to the top, put using Unity engine dot scene management and then we can go to the load scene and put scene manager dot load scene and we want to pass the name. Okay, so let's save everything. Let's go back to Unity. And now in our main menu, we have our menu button script attached. So we can press on this back button, go on the on click event, grab our main camera, drop it here. And then from the functions, let's select many buttons, load scene. And we want to put the name of the scene we want to load. So let's quickly go to the scenes folder and make sure you put your main menu. So the same name as you have here. Main menu. Okay, and then last thing is go to the file, build settings and make sure you have this main menu and the game scene added into this list. If you don't, just grab it and drop it there. So close this window, let's actually press play. If you go back, we are in the main menu. Of course, we cannot start the game from here. So I think I'm gonna quickly fix it. So let's stop this game. Now let's go back to our main menu. Make sure you save. So we wanna add the play button. The only difference is we want to make, make this play button to be not really the button, just the area of the screen. So let's say if player press here, we're going to start the game or any other part of the screen other than this setting buttons. So in order to do that, let's go to the canvas, right click, UI button. I'm going to call this button play. Let's remove this text component. Now let's switch to our scene view. I will change this source image. Let's click this small dot. And let's select the UI mask. So the UI mask is a transparent texture and should be available in your Unity because this is the standard texture. So as you see, once you select the UI mask, this mask is not visible. So you can now expand your button to the size of the screen. And there is only one thing to look after. You need to make sure that the setting buttons is below the play button. Otherwise, you won't be able to press this setting button. So I will just grab the settings and move it below the play. So the play button should be above the settings. Okay, now let's se let's select this play button. Actually, let's uh, select our main camera and we need to add our menu button script on it. So I will select the scripts, grab our menu buttons, drop it here. And then let's select the, select the play button, go to the on click events, click the small plus, grab our main camera, drop it here. From the functions, let's select menu buttons and then load scene, and we want to load our game scene. Okay, so we're going to put the game. So now let's go to the file, and then save, file, save project, and let's actually start our game. So switch to the game view, I will maximize on play, let's, play, let's press play. 
So now, as you see, when I press the setting buttons, it's pressable, we're not starting the game. But if I press in any other area of the screen, let's say I'm gonna press here, we're gonna start our game. Then we can go back, press in different area, and we can switch back and forward. So this, this implementation works fine. Okay, and then once you start the game, you can start placing your shapes, and then our other logic is working fine as well. Okay, so I think that's it for this episode. In the next episode, we're gonna look at the way how you can actually check if you don't have any more shapes available for you to get from here and then spawn another three different. So you will be able to keep playing and the, the shapes will be keep spawning. So thank you very much for watching. Again, if you like this episode, please consider subscribing to the, cha to the channel, hit the like, if you have any issue with the implementation, please leave me a comment below this video. So thanks for watching and I will see you again in the next episode.